In this video, we'll be working through the question you see on the screen from the 2023 Ordinary Level Maths Leave Insert. I recommend you try the question before watching, and if you get stuck anywhere, feel free to ask for help in the comments. I will do my best to get back to you. Check out my channel for a playlist with all the other questions. The maths in question one isn't actually that difficult, but it's a scary looking question. There's a lot of words in it, and you have to read through that. I, I compare it to, think of it as a story. You do have to read through that story and you do have to learn it. So this, the story of this question is, it's asking you about a house and the price of a house. It tells you the price of the house is 240,000 in 2019. Then it, re it really wants you to find out how much is it in 2020 and how much is it in 2021. They give you a bit of information for this. They tell you in 2020 it goes up uh, 8% and in 2021 it goes up 9%. Really, what they're asking in this question is, is to get a number 8% bigger than this number. That's it. And then on the, after, the next, after you get that number, find a number that's 9% there. That's really all they're asking here. So that's all we'll do. We'll get 240,000 and that's 100%. And we'll find a number that's 108%. Oh, uh, also I should warn you, percentages, I'm not really the best at teaching them. I'm gonna show, try and show you how I think about them, but really how I do them, I'll show you at the end. Um, it's very quick on a calculator. That's how I really do them. So um, it's, I find it a bit hard to teach, but this is how I, this is the best way I've found to tell people over the years. So we start with 100%, the number they gave us, and we want to get to 108% because it increases 8%. I always, to, to get from 100 to 108, or to get from any two numbers, we'll show you this more times as it goes on. To get from 100 to 108, I simply change to one first and then change to 108. To get from 100 to one, divide by 100. So divide this number by 100. Two, four, zero, zero. Just take two of the zeros off. Div or put this in a calculator, divide by 100. 2,400. To get from one to 108, just multiply by 108. So 2,400 multiplied, put a bracket on here, by 108 and a calculator would tell us what that is or I have it uh, written down here already and um, it is 259,200 euro. And that's something important to know um, make sure the answer makes sense. If you've got a lot of students do this they do some sum that's close to being correct and they get an answer like 210,000 but it has to make sense. The number went up at 8%. So the number here should be close to this, but a little higher. And that, that looks about right. Okay, you do the same, just do the exact same method to get this next number, but I'll show you the quicker way. I'll just grab my calculator. Um, well, I guess you can't see my calculator. So the quicker way is to start with this number, 259200, and this is to increase at 9%. And we're just gonna multiply that by 1.09. That's all I did here in two or three steps. And this is how I would do it uh, myself. Um, again, I have the number already done here. This sum here should equal 282,528. And that's how you do this. Um, percentages can be a little difficult because they, they're always different. Um, often it's going from 100 to 108, or sometimes you start at, at uh, like 79% and you want to get to 100. Um, it can be often a bit tricky, that's why I like to show this slow method here. But do bear in mind, there's usually a very fast way to do that. Okay, on to part B, we have a different house here, 460,000. And it went up in value to 472,000. As I was just saying, there's a fast way to do this, but I'm gonna do it this slow and steady way just to try and help you think about it. And it'll it look quite similar. I start with 460,000. Um, I guess I could just change this to 460, uh, but anyway, we'll leave it this longer way. And I want to get to 472,000. This is 100%, and 
And I want to get to um, some number here. What number, what increase is this? 108 would be 8%, 110 would be a 10% increase. So how do I do that? I get from this number to this number. I always do it the same way. I just go to one, divide by it will get me to one, multiply by this will get me to this number. So how did I get, for, to say that again, how did I get from 460,000 to one? I divide it by 460,000. So I better do the same thing to this. So that's 100 divided by 460,000. And then how do I get from one to this number? I just multiply it by 472,000. Do the same here, 472,000 multiplied by 100 over 460,000. And a calculator will do that for me. Uh, let's see what I got. Um, I get out, yeah, the calculator should give out uh, 100, 102.608. And I think I rounded off to seven there. So some more numbers here. Now the question asked us to one decimal place. So it's a little tricky here because we have to know how to read this. 102%, that's not right. It increased, 100 went to 102, it increased 2% or two point something here. So one decimal place would be these two numbers here. 60 is closer to a six than it is to a seven. So the answer we're looking for is 2.6%. Um, I hope that made sense. That, that's at least how I think of percentages. Um, also, you should just to note, you need to be com comfortable in thinking this is a, 2.6 is the same as this number, percentage and non-percentage. And also, you it is useful to get used to it as uh, 1.026, or in this case, 102.6. These, they're not all the same, but they, you, they can be thought of as very similar, especially when dealing with percentages. Um, because you'll often, instead of 2%, you'll be dealing with 102%. Okay, I hope that helped. Um, that's how I think of these questions. Um, but I do understand I'm not the best at teaching these. Oh, um, before we get onto part C, let me just quickly show you how I really would have done this question. Uh, really, I would have just got this number divided by this one. So I would have just got 472 divided by 460. All the zeros would cancel. And this would come out as 1.026 um, and round it off. So I would instantly just go, well, the answer is 2.6%. But my main job, I deal in finance and stuff, and I deal in percentages all the time. And very regularly, I do a quick sum like that to work out the percentage. I get 1.026, and I just know it's 2.6%. I don't do anything fancy to change from this to this. I just have learned over the years. That's how I would do it, but I, I hope you got something out of the slower way I showed you. Okay, in part C, they again have given us a house uh, worth 265,000 and over four years, it goes up the same percentage every year. After four years, it's worth 370,000. And uh, what percentage is it? How much percent has it gone up every year? And here's a formula to help you out to find the answer to that. Um, as an aside, I do wanna warn you, in the exams, the house always goes up in value. That's not technically true in life, so, just be warned, don't buy a house and assume it will definitely go up in value. But anyway, back to the maths question. Um, I'm gonna show you the slow, long way to answer this, and then I'm gonna show you a quicker way that I personally, because I deal in percentages all the time, and how I would answer it. Um, so the slow way, and also they give us, yeah, they tell us this in the question, F is equal to the final price, 370,000. P, the principal, is the starting price, or is the percentage we're looking for, and T is the amount of time, in this case, four years. So really, how I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna use algebra and solve this formula. So let's fill in all the numbers we can fill in. Um, 370,000, you could just write 370, but I'll write in all the numbers for now, is equal to two, two, six, five, thousand uh, multiplied by one plus or over a hundred to the power of four. T is four. That's filling in everything we know. 
There's only one thing we don't know here, and that's R. So we can go ahead and rearrange this equation to solve for R. Okay, the first thing I would get rid of is this multiply here. It multiplies by everything, so it should be easy to get rid of. Divide everything by this number. So we get 370 divided by 265. All the zeros will cancel on both sides. And that will be equal to 1 plus R over 100 to the power of 4. Okay, next thing to get rid of. Again, we want to leave R on its own. We want at the end to have R equals R, or even uh, equals R. Just, just something we can do, put on a calculator. So we want to get R on its own. And what can we get rid of next? The 4 is acting on everything. We're looking for things that act on everything. And the 4 acts on everything. Let's get rid of that. The power of 4. So here, this multiplied. So we did the opposite, divide. When something adds, we do the opposite, take away. In this case, 4 to the power of. We need to do the opposite of power of 4. And that's not everyone knows that, a bit of practice. Uh, it does come up regularly, so something we should know. The opposite to the power of 4 is to the power of 1 over 4. And that equals 1 plus or over 100. Let me just make a bit of room here. Um, right, what else? 1 acts on everything. So let's just take 1 away from both sides. Uh, 370 over 265 to the power of 1 over 4. You can put this in the calculator now, by the way, but I just like the weight at the end. Uh, minus 1 is equal or over 100. And then get rid of the 100. Multiply both sides by 100. And let me just do that quickly because I don't have that much room. Multiply this by 100. And I multiply this side by 100. So that's left with just or. You can go ahead and put this into a calculator. You need to be very careful. Uh, hopefully you have lots of practice using a calculator, especially for big sums like this, because it does happen and it is quite helpful. Or you can do it each separately in each separate. Just be very careful. Make sure, give yourself like five minutes to do this. I'm gonna do it instantly because I can edit the video. I can be careful. I have lots of practice with this. But just do this quite slowly and carefully um, go back to your junior cert book, uh, go back to the start of your leaving cert book, and there should be lots of practice on you doing just weird big sums on your calculator. And just get, get good at it, make sure in the exam you have plenty of time, if you do everything slowly and steadily, you have plenty of time. But anyway, be careful on this. I have a calculator, and I will get something like, this left side would be 8.702 is equal to R. Now the question asked, um, give your answer correct to one decimal place. So that's uh, the answer is or is equal 8.7%. There's one final thing you can do in this question. You can check your answer and it's very quick to check. Take uh, this number here and multiply it by um, 1.087. That's, that's what increasing by 8.7% looks like. Multiply this by 1.087 1 and do it four times. And hopefully you should get this number. It'd be off by a little bit because we rounded off here. So it's gonna be off, maybe by a few euro, I'm not sure. But double check you're in the right area. You usually have time in your exam to double check your answer. Think of the end of your exam. You usually have 20, 30 minutes. You're sitting there, you don't know what else to do. This is what you should be doing. You should be checking answers as you go. Uh, before I finish, I promised I'd show you how I would do this much quicker um, than, than doing you know, all that algebra. I'd simply just get this number divided by that number, uh, 370 divided by 265, and that will equal 1.396. More, I would use more decimal places for what I'm about to do, but still, that's all I've written down here. And that's how much it's increased over four years, 39.6%. Um, but I want over uh, one year and at a constant rate. And that's easy to get once you have this number. It's just 1.396 with all the rest of it to the power of one over four. And as you see in the real question, we use power of one over four. And that should equal, uh, well, it'll equal the same thing. It'll come out as 1.087 or 8.0. 8.7%. So that's how I would do that question and 
things like this come up all the time in uh, finance. You want to know um, if if a number has gone from here to here, what uh, what is the CAGR, what's the constant um, growth rate at? Okay, that's it for question one. I hope you got something out of that. Uh, I apologize, I'm not the best at teaching percentages and some of this uh, sort of simpler financial uh, maths. It's because I do finance myself at a bit of a higher level, so I just find it a little hard to teach this. But hopefully you got something. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer you and good luck in your exams.